Welcome back to Science God. In this video, I'm going to go over two very profound arguments against the existence of God. They are the divine hiddenness argument and the religious confusion argument. So first up, the divine hiddenness argument. There are several different ways to frame this argument, but let's focus on one common version. This argument has three basic premises. Premise one, if a perfectly loving God exists, then he would always be open to a personal relationship with any person. The idea is that love is naturally relational. It's not just about being kind, it's about wanting to connect and wanting to be with the other person simply because you care about them. So a perfectly loving God would always be open to having a personal relationship with every one of his creations. Premise two, if God is always open to a relationship with anyone, there shouldn't be any cases where people genuinely don't believe in God, even though they're willing to. This is what's called the non-resistant non-belief. These are people who don't believe in God, but not because they're stubborn or rebellious. They are willing to believe, they just don't see enough reason or evidence to think that he exists. The logic is simple. For a relationship to exist, you must at least need to acknowledge that the other party exists. So if God truly wanted a relationship with these people, he would make sure that they know that he is real. Premise 3. There are cases of non-resistant non-belief in the world. There are so many people that are open to the idea of God, but they just don't feel like there's enough evidence for him. They aren't resisting him, they just don't seem to believe that he's there. So the conclusion is, if a perfectly loving God exists, he would make himself known to everyone who's open to having a relationship with him. But since there are non-resistant non-believers, it seems that a perfectly loving God doesn't exist. Now, of course, there are a number of responses to this argument. Some say that God must have good reasons for staying hidden. And others question whether there really are people who are totally non-resistant in their unbelief. But this argument does present a real challenge, especially for people who feel like God is more absent in their lives than he is present. A lot of people say things like, I just don't feel him or I haven't seen any evidence. It's not always about rejecting God. Sometimes it's more about feeling like he's just not there. And that's why this argument resonates with so many people, perhaps even more so than the classic problem of evil. It's a modern challenge to the idea of a loving God that continues to spark debate. Next up is the religious confusion. Now, this is also referred to the religious diversity argument. The basic idea is that if God exists and creates humans, you would expect him to make sure that we all know how to properly relate to him. After all, having a relationship with God is hugely important as seen by most believers. And getting it wrong, well, that's often said to have pretty serious, even internal consequences. So if God exists, we should expect him to clearly reveal what he's like, how we're supposed to live, and how we can be in communion with him. This would include letting us know the right way to worship and connect with him. But here's the problem. The world is full of religious confusion. There are thousands of religions, and they all have different and often conflicting ideas about God's existence, his nature, and what he wants from us. And these aren't just small disagreements. They're about fundamental things like who God is and how, we're, how we are supposed to relate to him. On top of that, some divine revelation seems strange or morally questionable. Think about the religious texts that talk about God commanding violent acts or collective punishments. If God is trying to guide us, these kinds of messages can seem confusing or even troubling. So the argument goes, if God exists and wants us to know him and live in accordance with his will, 
he hasn't done a great job of communicating that. On the other hand, if there is no God, religious confusion makes total sense. Different religions are more likely a result of social, cultural, or historical factors rather than clear divine guidance. Some might argue that there are common threads across religions, like the idea of there being something sacred or holy, or a belief in something supernatural that suggests there's something divine. But this doesn't really solve the problem of why God hasn't made his will more clear, especially when so much is at stake. To make this clear, think about a parent with their children. Imagine the kids are arguing about who gets to play with a toy because they each believe the parent told them something different. Now if the parent could easily step in and clarify, but doesn't, we would question whether the parent is being responsible. Likewise, if God exists and could easily clear up the confusion about how to relate to him, but doesn't, it does raise the question about his goodness or his ability to communicate. This level of confusion is surprising under theism, but it is expected under atheism, where religions are seen as human-made. So, this is the religious confusion argument, and like the divine, the, the divine hiddenness argument, it does challenge the idea of an all-powerful, loving God. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. God bless you. Have a great day.